persons even from the same gender. That's why I'm saying that we need to be careful of what we are talking about. We are talking about Islamic marriage. A male is marrying a female. We are not talking about the civil marriage. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. This could be a male and a male or Which a female. Which can be, female. yes. A male and a male, a female and a female. Two persons are from the same gender. And as this program, inshallah, is going to be heard in different countries, from different backgrounds, and maybe not only Muslims are going to watch it, maybe many non-Muslims from religious background, from non-religious background, they might watch this program. We want to make it clear that we are talking about Islamic marriage which for many, even non-Muslims, who are still holding on family values, they define it as a relationship between a male and a female. They have not yet accepted the change in the definition, a male and a male. This is what we are talking about. But surely, Shafi, just because family values are so important, and of course, within family values, marriage is probably the most important subject. That means that it significantly makes it more important that the marriage is more natural from the Islamic point of view in terms of marriage is for a man and a woman. Yes, definitely. You see, there might be some legal issues here because some countries, including the UK, where I came from, when you talk about marriage, even Islamic marriage, and when you talk about that it is the natural kind of bond between a male and a female, this might raise the alarm or ring alarms in the media, in the tabloid media, even with some politicians, and they might even call you names, accuse you of extremism, of radicalization, etc., etc., because of this statement that you have said, that the marriage is the natural or the organic relationship between two persons from the same gender. Mm -hmm. yeah? However, we have to stress that it is the traditional way of having this kind of relationship. It is also the natural way of having this kind of relationship. Many people are trying to deny it and they say that many people, they are gays and they can naturally yeah, be attracted to a person from the same gender. We are not going to discuss these issues. We are discussing the Islamic marriage, which is traditionally the marriage between two persons from the opposite genders. Again, for most people still, they believe that it is the natural relationship between two persons, which means that those two persons will be from opposite genders. So here we are talking about the Islamic marriage. Yeah. In terms of the importance of marriage within society, where do you think it stands and how do you think we can preserve the traditional marriage if you like? Okay, now, first of all, let us talk about the traditional marriage from even a non-Islamic perspective. The traditional marriage from a non-Islamic perspective. Marriage is the cornerstone of a stable society. Mm -hmm. Many people have spoken about it. Many non-Muslims have confirmed this kind of relationship. Fukuyama spoke a lot about it, this famous American thinker. Many other thinkers, even from China, from different backgrounds. They have spoken about this kind of sacred relationship between two persons from opposite gender, where they have this kind of bond and they produce children. And this kind of relationship, it provides the societies and the individuals from certain needs that wouldn't be fulfilled or satisfied by any other kind of relationship. First of all, the cornerstone for a stable society that enjoys security. Why? Because this kind of relationship, the marriage relationship, prepares the individuals to be part of a network, to be part of a society. And by the way, this aspect of marriage has not been emphasized, has not been mentioned or explained by many people. They think that the main aim of marriage is to fulfill the sexual needs. Mm -hmm. This is true, 
but there are some other important effects of marriage, such as preparing the person to be an individual who is part of a bigger network or a bigger community. So it breaks the individualism within individuals. So making sure that the foundation of society, which marriage plays a big part of, needs to be strong. Without a shadow of a doubt. But the first element of a strong society is that the individuals of that society are ready to be part of a society. Now, to be ready to be part of a society, this needs to be nourished with the person from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So when the child feels that there is a mom and dad, they live in this kind of sacred relationship, there is a family, there is a small community, and in fact, there is a small country within his house where the top leader is the father and the subjects of that community are the children and the mother. The father serves something and the mother complements that. The mother serves something and the father complements that as well. The children listen to both of them and they develop. Yeah? The children will feel that they are looked after and they will look after other people as well. They will see the father sacrificing for them. They will see the mother sacrificing for them. They will see a kind of love between mother and father. They will feel that if there is an issue between them, then things have to be solved amicably. Otherwise, things will progress and will be out of hand. They will see the care between their mom and dad is a very important element of happiness and stability. They will see that care is not just the emotional care. Care includes the emotional side, the physical side, the financial side. It includes a number of things. So they will live as a small country in their family. And that's why the family is the foundation of any stable society. And by the way, many Western thinkers have spoken out about the biggest problem of Western societies. We are talking about, of course, liberal, non-Islamic, contemporary Western societies. We are not talking about traditional Western societies. And they say that the biggest problem Western societies are suffering from is marriage breakdown. By the way, they spoke about marriage breakdown. They were talking about traditional marriage. And that's why here it is very important to highlight that apart from the definition of marriage that has been changed recently by many Western societies, we need to remember another important change in terms of the nature of marriage. Marriage in many Western societies, and the audience have to be clear about what we are talking about here, it became just a legal kind of relationship between two persons or between husband and wife, a legal relationship rather than a matrimonial family-based relationship. Sheikh, this is a perfect time to end the episode. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but we do hope that the audience do come back and join us for the second episode of this new series, Marriage and Divorce. We have just finished covering what marriage is and how important family values are, including Islamic marriage and traditional marriage. Inshallah, please come back and join us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك There is joy, there is happiness In this union let there always be peace